The year 2000, the world had just survived the Y2K, Linkin Park released their debut album Hybrid Theory, the Olympics was about to be held in Sydney, and 3D Effects launched their final graphics card. The Voodoo 5 is a very sought after series of video cards, and for good reason, they represent the end of an era in PC gaming. Now, admittedly, I wasn't planning on buying one because they go for a lot of money these days. That was until a month ago when I was visiting a retro gaming store down in Melbourne and I saw a box with some random computer parts when I walked in. Looking inside, I saw this random video card with a 3DFX logo on the back. So I picked a few of the parts up and asked the guy, how much for these random parts? And he was like, I don't know, 10 bucks each? Well, at that point, I didn't care which Voodoo card it was because that was a bargain regardless. So of course I bought it. After doing a quick Google search at my hotel room, I finally found out I had a Voodoo 55500 in my hands. That was definitely the biggest bargain of my life. Well, if it's working, of course. So in this part of the Eric experiment, we'll find that out and build a PC around on this awesome find. So let's go, let's do it, let's just do it. Now, I'll be completely honest here, I did try to see if a computer would post with this graphics card before working on this video, and indeed it posted and I could go on Windows just fine with it. That's not the reason anyone would buy a Voodoo card though, if I wanted to just use Windows I could use any random S3 or Trident PCI video card. No, the reason to buy a video card like this one is to play games and I'm yet to find out if this one can do that normally. To find that out, we need a computer, and a computer needs a processor. The one I chose for this project is my beloved Pentium 3 1 GHz. The main reason I wanted to to use this processor is because the Coppermine Pentium 3s also came out in the year 2000. On top of that, if you watched my Pentium MMX build video, you'll probably remember that around 2004 I had a Pentium 4 computer that was shared among my family. So I built a computer for myself with a Pentium MMX and used that until I upgraded to a Pentium 3 just like this one. So as you can imagine, I would definitely have built a Pentium 3 computer regardless. The Voodoo 5 is a huge plus that I would have loved to own when I was younger. The motherboard I'm using for this build is this Intel desktop board d 815 es V. It's nothing special, it's the only Socket 370 motherboard I have available at the moment. It came with a random computer I got for free a while back. This motherboard supports only 512 megabytes of memory, so I'm using these two 256 PC-133 sticks. The motherboard has onboard sound, but there's no way I'm gonna use that. Instead, I'm gonna install a PCI Sound Blaster Live, which should give us excellent sound quality and compatibility for Windows games. One last thing that is notable about this build is that we're gonna use a 32GB MSATA SSD with two adapters to turn it into an IDE drive, as I don't want to rely on aging mechanical hard drives. The rest is just parts I had lying around, and it's all going into this case I got on Gumtree for 20 bucks a few months ago. Now that I think of it, this whole build cost me less than $100, which is pretty incredible if you think about how much some of these parts are going for these days. Now we can actually build the computer, which will start by preparing the motherboard. Now, the next step is to put the motherboard in the case, but because nothing can go smoothly on this channel, the holes for the motherboard standoffs were too large, so I had to use some M3 nuts to hold them in place. After that, we can install the motherboard. Don't worry though, in true Eric experiment fashion, more things are gonna go wrong later. The next step is to install our power supply. I decided to go with a brand new one because I don't want to risk the components on this computer with an old power supply. After connecting it to the motherboard, let's connect the stuff in the front panel while we have space for that. Now let's add a DVD drive. Let's also install a floppy drive because as far as I'm concerned, if a computer can have a floppy drive, it will have a floppy drive. And then we can prepare our SSD to be installed. We'll use some double-sided sticker strips to attach this thing to a 2.5 to 3.5 inch adapter tray so it can be installed securely inside of the case. 
Now we can just screw it in like we would with any hard drive. And after that we can connect all of our drives. It's time now to install our Voodoo 5. And, as promised, something else went wrong. This video card needs extra power from a Molex connector and there are none left on this power supply. So, after all of this, we need to replace the power supply with one that has enough connectors as I don't have any SATA to Molex adapters. After redoing all of that, we can finally connect power to our Voodoo. Then it is time to install our trusty Sand Blaster Live. After connecting the CD audio cable to it, we can finish things off by adding some brackets to the open slots on the back, and then close the case. Now, that's a cool looking computer. Now you might be wondering, what operating system are we gonna install on it? F yeah, we're going with Windows Me. Say what you will about it, I think there are enough builds with Windows 98 around. Sure, I could also have gone with Windows 2000 or Windows XP, but given the 512 megabytes of RAM limitation on the motherboard, and that that's also Windows Me's memory limit, it seemed like a good choice. Nah, that's bullshit. Those operating systems can run on 512 megabytes of RAM just fine. I just wanted to install Windows Me. But before getting to this point right here, of course, I had to deal with a few more issues. What are the odds that none of the drives would work after building a computer? Well, I don't know, but that's exactly what happened. First, I had to replace the DVD drive because it was busted. I actually had to go with a CD drive because that was the only white DVD drive I had. I then had to replace my hard drive's IDE cable because the one I used stopped working. These 80 wire IDE cables are super fragile. And the floppy drive didn't work because my dumb ass connected it wrong. The A drive has to go in the first connector of the cable. Another annoying thing is that the power LED died because the connector on the motherboard outputs 5 volts and this cheap case doesn't have a resistor for the LED. I will eventually replace it and add a resistor myself. After all of this saga, I can finally finish setting everything up. Regardless of the Voodoo 5, this is a pretty cool computer overall and I could go into some of the other stuff I'm gonna do with it, but the reason we're here today is the Voodoo 5 and we need to check if games will run on it normally. So I decided to run 3D Mark 2001 SE as a dry run. And yeah, it seems to be working great. This is a score I got in the end, I honestly don't know if it's any good, so whatever. But 3D Mark uses DirectX and there are literally hundreds of cards that can run it, a lot of them being a lot cheaper as well. So the reason you'd get a Voodoo card is to be able to run Glide games, and to test that functionality I tried to run a couple of the 3DFX demos for this particular card. Oh yeah! I have no idea what these are supposed to be, but it seems to be working. Anyway, let's skip this garbage and try some actual games. Well, this is crap. I can't see anything. One second. There, it is a bit better with this LCD. The image on the CRT is a bit dark, probably because of its aging components. But anyway, in the Pentium MMX build video, I tried to run The Sims and SimCity 3000 on it. They ran, but the performance was kinda crap. So I'll start with The Sims, which runs on this computer without it breaking a sweat. What? Those are perfectly good beds! What are you complaining about, you entitled bastards? Anyway, moving on from those ungrateful bastards, let's also try SimCity 3000. I went into it thinking, yeah, of course it's gonna run perfectly. But surprisingly or not, huge maps like the Berlin one that comes with the game are very heavy, even for this computer. 
But yeah, small maps run just fine. Now you're probably thinking, that's cool and all, but again, those are not glide games. Fair enough, the next game I want to try on it is Unreal Tournament because not only is it one of the most well-known glide games, but it's also one of my favorite first-person shooters. But anyway, Unreal Tournament is running perfectly at 1024 by 768 the next game I want to try on this computer is Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. I'm actually not too sure if it uses glides like the previous versions, I actually think it runs on DirectX, but it is a game from that time period and it's one that I really love. It also runs perfectly at 1024 by 768 Another game I tried to run on the computer was Nova Logics F16 Multi Role Fighter. It's a bit of an older game, but it has a 3DFX logo on the box, but for some reason it kept crashing when I tried to load a mission. It loads fine with software rendering, so I don't know if it's an issue with the video card or any other thing in the computer. It's not a huge deal though, because I'm planning on building a Voodoo 2 computer in the near future, and this game should run fine on it. Another game that kept crashing on me, which isn't a glide game, but it's a game from that time period and a game that I absolutely love was Silent Hill 2. Looking on the internet though, it seems like this game loves crashing on everyone, so I'm not too concerned about it. If I want to play it, I'll probably do it on my PS2 anyway. Another game from that time period that ran great was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. I've always loved this game on the PS1 and I remember seeing the graphics for the PC and being impressed by them even though I had never had the chance to play it on the PC before. The Tony Hawk games are just awesome, uh, I mean, until Tony Hawk 4. Another game that I've always wanted to try but I never had the chance was Lemmings Revolution. The original Lemmings is probably my favorite game of all time and I remember seeing this one when I was younger and being super curious about it. Lemmings Revolution also runs perfectly on this computer. But does it run Crisis? Of course not, are you crazy? And there you have it! I could probably have tried even more games and more demanding ones as well as more glide games and I definitely will in the future but I don't want this video to be hours long. I'm just happy now that aside from some hiccups this computer is running great. I'll probably upgrade the motherboard in the future to one that supports more memory though. I'm also trying to get hold of a 1.4GHz Toilet Tape Engine 3 because I've always wanted one of those so maybe that's another future upgrade to this machine. But that's it for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to like it and if you enjoy content around retro gaming and retro computing make sure to subscribe to the Eric experiment thanks for watching